This is the all new Kashi OS which is an exciting distro that offers wild, wild performance gains with its innovative approach. Kashi OS is an Arch based Linux distro that comes with features and tweaks that are unseen in any other Linux distro. It capitalizes on the bleeding edge tech of Arch Linux and gives you a turbocharged computing experience. By specifically targeting architectural advancements that come with x86-64 version 3 and version 4 and special kernel tweaks, Kashi OS boosts up the performance on newer computers. Now Kashi OS is not a lightweight Linux distro that cuts down on features to speed up your system, no. Kashi OS features KD Plasma and GNOME desktops and still delivers impressive performance gains. And I found it to be very well rounded in all the other areas like looks, software choice and stability. So yeah, Kashi OS is a solid operating system. So let's jump right in and have a look at what might end up being your next operating system. Alright, starting off with the main topic of the night, performance is something that you'll really appreciate on Kashi OS. It's one of the best performing operating systems out there for computers that came out in the last 20 years, with only few distros like Clear Linux outperforming Kashi OS. Getting into it, Kashi OS implements many advancements in architecture and kernel tweaks to deliver boosted performance. You can expect 10 to 20% improvements in certain tasks. Now that's massive. While we have many Linux distros that cater to older hardware, improving performance on ancient computers, Kashi OS aims to take advantage of new advancements to improve performance. If you bought a computer in the last 15-20 years, it might be built on x86-64 version 3 or even version 4. Now all distros are built for x86-64 version 1 or 2 to ensure compatibility. And compatibility for older devices has always been a limiting factor technologically. While Kashi OS runs perfectly fine on older devices, things change on newer computers. Kashi OS detects if your computer supports the newer version 3 or version 4 instruction set and if yes, it uses kernels compiled specifically for version 3 or version 4 to get maximum throughput. The newer versions of architecture come with additional instruction sets like SSE3, AVX2, AES-NI and many more which significantly improve the performance in media playback, gaming, application speeds, encryption and decryption and your computer generally runs faster and better. It's like using an optimized and well-maintained engine that burns fuel more cleanly and efficiently, producing more torque and power compared to an old gas guzzler which might give you bad mileage. When you install software, Kashi OS installs the packages that are optimized for x86-64 version 3 if your computer supports it. And these packages bring visible performance boosts. I think Arch Linux had started a similar project and apps compiled using the version 3 target ran so much better, at times showing up to 30% faster speeds. The kernel and all the packages you install are also optimized using the latest link time optimization. With it, the code written gets highly optimized when compiling the application. This makes the operating system and the applications much faster to load, run smoother and deliver faster performance. The Linux kernel especially benefits hugely from this technique. Then, Cashew OS gives you extensive control over your kernel. Firstly, all the custom kernels are made available here for easy installation and tuning up. The Linux Zen kernel, Harden kernel, BMQ, CFS and many more options are available here. You can install and manage kernels using the Kashi OS Kernel Manager which comes pre-installed. This application also lets you tweak the kernel. You can change the CPU scheduler and do so many more advanced things here. But if it's too much for you to get into, the default Kashi OS kernel is more than enough for most people. We get a custom kernel by default which cherry picks tweaks from many kernels to improve the throughput. It uses the advanced Bo scheduler which improves the responsiveness as well as performance on most hardware. It's great for day-to-day -day computer usage, multiprocessing and even gaming. Yeah, this is the reason many Linux gamers seem to be picking Kashi OS. If I go on talking about the performance tweaks on Kashi OS, we'll be talking for quite some time. But yeah, I'm impressed here. What's even more impressive is, Kashi OS achieves this all while not compromising on system stability. See, the Linux kernel by default hits that sweet spot between being optimized for performance and stability slash compatibility. Going one way will hurt the other. Kashi OS picks tweaks that deliver noticeable improvements in performance without degrading the stability of the system. Kashi OS scores are dashing 10 out of 10 in the performance department. I've linked the benchmarks, explainer articles and even reddit reviews pertaining to the amazing performance of Kashi OS in the description below. Kashi OS has few more fantastic advantages I want to talk about, so let's move on. Kashi OS starts off with a great impression by providing us all the desktop environments. 
Gnome, KD Plasma, Cinnamon, XFC, Budgie, Sway, we literally get all the desktop options. But Plasma and Gnome are kinda the official choices which come with additional cash US branding and looks. The rest all come in their stock forms. With Plasma, we are getting the latest version and it too comes with brand colors. Plasma is a super polished desktop and it looks great here. The menu, the bottom panel and the applets, everything looks top notch. Cashew OS does have its own custom theme here but it defaults to Breeze Dark which is a great choice as Breeze is a theme that's at the top of the game. The desktop is clean and minimal here. We are getting the latest version of Plasma desktop here since Cashew OS is Arch based. People who use Plasma will use Plasma. But if you are a GNOME user, I invite you to try out Cache OS with Plasma as it is simple and modern. You'll come to appreciate the sleek and productivity oriented experience that Plasma provides here. I mean in addition to its aesthetic appeal, Plasma desktop on Cache OS also provides a unique feel to the overall computing experience. Its intuitive and familiar Windows style design makes it easy to navigate allowing users to quickly access applications and files they need easily. Plasma desktop looks just amazing with Cache OS. The GNOME version gives us the latest GNOME desktop with a darkish vibe. And the desktop looks uniquely stunning in this theme. We have the dash on the left side of the screen, Ubuntu style. We also get Pop OS window tiling feature here which lets you quickly tile up the running applications on the screen. When using multiple applications at the same time, this tiling manager really simplifies the workflow. This is a great addition here from a productivity point of view. Then I want to touch upon the theming here. While the theme looks good, in fact very good at first sight, I did find it a bit dull after using it for some time. The newer versions of GNOME that is version 40 plus are using a completely new engine under the hood. Newer applications here are using GTK4 and theming on this new engine is quite different. Most custom themes have not yet been ported over to this version and the default GNOME Advaita is the only major theme available and it's pretty good, extremely good and it also includes a dark theme. This theme here looks good initially but I didn't enjoy it using for longer. It also needs polishing up. I would have preferred the option to use stock GNOME here as well. While you cannot change it using the tweak tool included here, you can use an application called Gradients to manually change the colors. I have included the installation instructions in the description below. I prefer Cashew's Plasma version to the GNOME one. It feels so much more polished and usable. The default choice of terminal is Alacrity with Fish here. This looks great and it also brings all the fish advantages like autocomplete with it, which can be great when using the terminal. An XFC version of Cache OS is in the works and by the initial screenshots, I expect it to be very good looking. This is very good thinking as Cache OS will be marketed as a performance oriented distro, makes sense to have a lightweight option for people looking to squeeze every ounce of performance out of their hardware. All the other desktops are available in their stock avatars but can be customized as you want. In the looks and feel department, Cache OS does an impressive job. It doesn't go overboard with colors like its cousin Garuda Linux but it's not vanilla either. It manages to get attention on both desktops and laptops. One thing that you'll absolutely enjoy here is the software availability. Being an Arch based Linux distro, Cache OS gets access to huge Arch software repositories here. The Arch Linux community makes sure that all the software are available in their newest stable versions always. We get the Pacman package manager here which harmoniously manages your system. It lets you install a wide variety of packages across categories. You get different kinds of desktops, applications, games, utilities and so much more. Cache OS comes with its own graphical software manager which gives you a list of popular software grouped according to categories. Here you can install all the major browsers, a good set of messengers and communication apps, development tools, games and so much more. Now be mindful that these are not all the apps that are available in Cache OS. That list is huge. You can switch to the repos tab here and you'll find an exhaustive list of applications that are available here. We also get flat packs here but the thing about Arch Linux is you really don't need these unified package managers like Snap and Flatpak because any software you want will be available here either through the official repositories or Arch user repositories. Arch user repositories or AUR is a community maintained pool of Linux software. If a software is created for Linux, it will be available here and they are very easy to install. So in the software department, Cache OS delivers best in class experience. This is one reason that I absolutely love Arch Linux and its derivatives. Getting software is just amazing here. Now I know what you might be saying. Cache OS is impressive and all but it does sound a bit too bleeding edge. What about stability? Is it usable for day to day usage or is Cache an enthusiast toy? I too had this very question. But after using Cache OS for a week now, I am perfectly fine using this system as my main machine. Cache OS is Arch based and Arch Linux despite being a cutting edge rolling release distro 
is considered to be very reliable. Arch gives you access to the newest packages before any other Linux distro. Still, a large number of people use Arch Linux as their main system. This is because Arch Linux has a very rigorous testing process for all the packages in its official repositories. These new packages are pushed to its users only after their reliability is confirmed. This same reason also makes Cache OS dependable. Cache OS developers have included many tweaks and tech that improve the performance. But by any standards, you can say that they have still taken a conservative approach. Yeah, they have not gone overboard with the whole performance thing, sacrificing stability in the meantime. No, in fact, they have prioritized system reliability and included tweaks that are safe. But they have provided you the choice if you want to try out more aggressive performance tweaks. With a large user base, the Arch base and Arch packages are maintained at a high standard. So Cache OS can be used on home computers, it's great for students, gamers and enthusiasts. I wouldn't recommend it for mission critical systems, but for most, Cache OS will provide a dependable and stable computing. And you're getting Cache OS in either KDE Plasma or GNOME flavors, both of which are fantastic user interfaces. They are easy to get started with and within no time, even newcomers can start using these with that homely feel. Cache OS also has an application called Hello, which quickly familiarizes you with Cache OS specific features and lets you perform advanced operations with ease. Major points for the usability here. Gaming on Linux is at a better than ever height. Because of the advancements in Wine and by the work done by Steam, we can today play thousands of top games, including Windows exclusives, on Linux. And Cache OS positions itself as a great choice for Linux gaming. Firstly, because of the performance-oriented vision of the distro and the delivery, Cache OS becomes a very attractive Linux distro for gaming. Cache OS can deliver better frame rates in games compared to Windows. Especially on mid-range processors, you'll be able to squeeze out more. This will make your gaming experience a lot better. And you can also tinker around and play under the hood easily to maximize the performance. But the default Bo scheduler does a good job at running games at an optimized performance profile. Secondly, Cache OS has excellent driver support. AMD and Intel integrated graphics drivers are pre-installed with latest versions. Nvidia drivers are also pre-installed and you get an option to boot with and install them during installation. Thanks to Arch, you'll be using the best drivers at any moment with all optimizations applied. This makes sure that you get what you paid for. There has been a lot of work going on in the GPU driver space in Linux, so it's good to have the latest drivers here. Then you'll get easy access to the latest Wine, Proton and other tools and games here which make getting started really easy. I recommend Steam as it takes out the complexity from gaming on Linux. It also has a ton of native games for Linux. Then, using Steam Play, we can play Windows titles like GTA 5, The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077, and so many more with ease here. These games install and run like they are Linux native. I'm playing The Witcher 3 currently and it runs so smoothly. Installing it was literally a single quick operation without the need for me to configure anything manually and it runs so good here. Highly recommend it. Overall, Cache OS gives us solid reasons to consider it as a top candidate for gaming on Linux. The cool thing about Arch based distros is, generally, they tend to be easier to install and have graphical installers. Arch Linux has a, you can say, expert level installation. So, Arch derivatives like Manjaro, Endeavor OS, and even Cache OS, they make the amazing Arch Linux accessible to everybody. Cache OS gives us the Calmaris installer, which is very easy to use. It represents all the actions in a very beginner friendly way. So you can install and get started with Cache OS even if you are new to this. Cache OS gives us the options to install it offline as well as online. In online mode, you get vastly more options like desktop environment choice, additional package options and so much more. But with Arch, the online option is not always the best choice. If you are too far from Arch software mirrors or have low internet speed, installing Arch based distros can be a huge headache. By selecting the offline option here, you'll be able to get started with Cache OS faster and then you can go ahead and install the stuff that you want later. This is great thinking on the developer's part as I've struggled heavily with Arch and Arch based distros before when I had very low speed internet connections and there were no Arch mirrors near me. With the offline option here, all that potential headache is gone. If you have Nvidia hardware, make sure to select the option to boot with Nvidia drivers during live boot. This will automatically install the drivers for you. All in all. Downloading, installing, setting up the drivers and getting started with Cache OS is fairly straightforward and it will take around 20 minutes. Good experience here. Honestly, there are many performance oriented distros. In fact, just my last video was about the 5 best distros to get high performance. Do check it out as I included some cool ones there. But the thing is, all these performance oriented distros come with a trade-off. They generally tend to offer lightweight desktops like XFC or LXD. 
While this is fine features wise, I mean XFC has kept up with say GNOME or Plasma. But if you don't like XFC and you absolutely love using GNOME, they don't work for you. But Cache OS delivers without these trade offs. You're getting that shiny desktop that you absolutely love, plus there is that performance gain. So why would you want to sell for less? A well rounded system with great features, full control, and a stable computing system for your work and play. So yeah, Cache OS makes sense. Now, personally, I didn't like the GNOME version. It was alright, but it was not for me. The colors there just felt wrong. With Lib Adweta, theming is very wonky on the latest versions of GNOME, though many major themes are popping up. I would have liked the option to go stock GNOME here. Anyway, I linked some cool GTK4 compatible themes that work great here, so you can give them a try. KDE Plasma version on the other hand, I absolutely loved it. Looks great, performs better, and is a fun option to play around with Cache OS. I recommend you try that out to get a feel of Cache OS. The download link is given in the description below. Next up, check out 2023's top 5 lightweight Linux distros that deliver max performance. I got some cool entries there. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. This is Linux Techs, signing out.